Jim goes hiking and gets lost in the woods. After a while, he gets really hungry. Jim wanders around and finds these three options, but only one of them is safe. Can you help Jim make the right choice? All the footsteps are leading to this berry bush, but not a single animal walked away from it. So the berries are probably poisonous. There's a scorpion creeping around these delicious bananas, so Jim should choose the apple tree. Timmy is packing bags for a hike in the mountains. Can you sort out extra items? It's unlikely he's going to need a hairdryer. Timmy's already taking a flashlight, and he probably won't have access to electricity. Therefore, he doesn't need this table lamp. And finally, he shouldn't take this heavy silver cutlery. A frog is at the bottom of a well. The well is 30 feet deep. The frog climbs up 5 feet every day, but it slips back 4 feet every night. After how many days will the frog be free? Twenty-six days. Wow! The frog climbs up by just one foot per 24 hours. So in 25 days, it will be at the level of 25 feet. And on the 26th day, it will make the final 5 feet jump and get out of the well. Billy here wakes up in a creepy cave and finds four tunnels leading outside. He only has one chance to escape. There's a hungry tiger inside the first tunnel. The second tunnel is filled with dust and spider webs. Yuck! There's a water-filled tank with sharks inside the third tunnel. And the fourth tunnel is full of venomous snakes. Uh -oh. Which tunnel is more or less safe to enter? Billy should choose the second tunnel. There are no spiders in this picture, only the webs. Crawling through them might be unpleasant, but at least he'll stay safe. Three tourists go hiking and get into trouble. Surprise, surprise! Can you guess who has more chances to survive? The third person. Although rats are gross, they're not fatal. Diana's boat was wrecked, and she ended up on a tropical island. The locals speak an unknown language, so Diana can't understand them. But still, she managed to spot this guy's wife right away. Can you see her too? It's the third lady. They have similar tattoos. Wendy is walking in the woods and falls into the trap of evil elves. She offers their king a deal. If I write your exact age on a piece of paper, you'll let me go. The king agrees and gives Wendy a piece of paper and a pen. In a minute, he lets her go. How did she do it? Wendy literally did what she said. She wrote your exact age on the paper. Ah, clever girl. Stan is walking home in a haunted city. He finds a nice spot to shoot a TikTok. But unfortunately, he falls into a basement. Stan looks around and finds four doors out. There's a hungry dragon behind the first door. The second way is filled with intense fire. There's a desert filled with hungry piranhas behind the third door. And venomous snakes are waiting behind the fourth door. Which way is the uh -oh. safest? The third one. Piranhas live in water, so they wouldn't manage to survive in the desert. Therefore, they're not dangerous for Stan. Jessica gets lost in the desert with just one small bottle of water. She has no clue where the nearest water source is. What would you suggest? Run as quickly as possible to find more water? Pour all water on her head to avoid sunstroke? Find a shady place and rest? 
stay where she is and shout for help as loud as possible. The third option is the best. When it gets darker and cooler, she can walk further and find help. Tilda is boarding a private jet. The crew greets her, and she spots an imposter among the crew members right away. Can you see this person too? The pilot is wearing a badge with a female face and name on it. Therefore, he had stolen someone else's ID. Tyler wakes up in the morning and finds out that his shadow is gone. Uh He goes to the local witch. She offers to choose from these six options. But only one of these shadows really belongs to Tyler. Can you spot which one? Only the first shadow fits perfectly. Nina and Sarah are both fond of swimming. But one of them is making a big mistake. Can you guess who? Nina. The sign says that the water in this river contains toxic waste. Meanwhile, Sarah can easily surf in large waves. Kyle and Betty go to a remote village to spend a romantic weekend. They see a cute little farm on the way and buy some pomegranates. They go on a picnic and enjoy the fruits. Each of them eats half of the pomegranate. In 10 minutes, Kyle gets very sick. Betty takes him to the hospital. Doctors check everything and come to the conclusion the pomegranate was poisoned. Kyle and Betty ate the same food and drank the same drinks all day. How is it possible that Betty still feels well? The poison was in the white seeds. Kyle ate them whole, while Betty only the red part. Allison is jogging in a park. Suddenly, she comes across an angry brown bear. It's getting closer and closer, but Allison manages to survive. What did she do? Started running as fast as she could? Fell to the ground and pretended to be unconscious? Or stood still and didn't move? What do you say? Usually, brown bears only attack people when they're surprised or feel threatened. Allison fell to the ground, and the bear didn't consider her dangerous. Peter is hiking in the middle of nowhere. Suddenly, he sees a mountain tiger in the distance. He's trying not to panic and begins to Uh look for a place to hide. There are three possible options, but only one of them is more or less safe. Can you help him make the right choice? If Peter climbs this tree, the tiger can easily get him there. Tigers actually like to swim. That's why it's not safe for Peter to escape by boat. But if he hides in this cave and blocks the entrance with a stone, he can call rescuers and wait for evacuation. Alice is 45 years older than her son Tom. Both of their ages contain prime numbers as the digits. Also, Alice's age is the reverse of Tom's age. Can you figure out their ages? The only single-digit prime numbers are 2, 3, 5, and 7. Here's a list of possible age combinations. 32 and 23, 52 and 25, 73 and 37, 53 and 35, 75 and 57. 72 and 27, but only the last combination meets the first requirement. The age difference should be 45 years. Therefore, Alice is 72 and her son is 27. Polly is an archaeologist. She excavates an ancient city. Suddenly, she finds a beautiful antique vase, or vase if you prefer. But one piece is missing. Polly also finds these ceramic fragments. Can you help her find the missing piece of the vase?
the fourth fragment fits perfectly. Dan lands with a parachute in a field in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Been there, done that. He finds the nearest bus station to get back to the city. But only one of these four buses will arrive at the station. Can you guess which one? It's the second bus. You can crack this maze much easier if you start drawing from the final destination. Amy leaves her workplace to go to the bathroom. She returns and finds out that someone had stolen all the cash from her wallet. Amy checks the wallet surface for fingerprints, but she only finds her own. The next day, Amy questions three of her co-workers. Mike says, Sorry, I've been out for lunch when the robbery took place. Oliver says, I've been feeling sick all morning, so I went home early. And Will says, I've been having a conference call with their clients. Can you spot the thief? It's Oliver. Take a look at his trash bin. He used gloves to steal the cash and then left them in the trash. He's the clumsy culprit. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side. Can you spot something odd in this image? Yep, this little guy is just a wannabe. Will you be able to find the fork that's different from the rest? Here it is. Its tines are way shorter than those of its fellow forks. How long will it take you to find the glove that doesn't have a pair? But of course, here it is. Wow, that was fast. Now let's make it trickier. Which snowflake is lonely? Exactly, this pretty one in the center. Try to spot the rubber boot that doesn't have a pair. Here it is. You must have an eagle eye. Is there an imposter among all these X's? Yup, it's the letter Y. Have you just pressed the hard mode button? Okay, which lion is different from the rest? Right, this king of the jungle is missing one ear. Can you spot a sunflower among all these buzzing bees? Ah, here it is, hiding in the corner. Which avocado is different from the rest? This one. Look at its stone. It must be in love. What's your bet? Is it Ava or Kado? And now the real game starts. You see most of these logos every day, but how well do you really know them? Do you recognize the logo of the world-famous producer of electronics? The left one looks much more natural, and no wonder, it's the correct logo. How often do you order stuff from Amazon? Let's see. If you pick the right logo, it must be often enough. What a tricky task! 
these logos look almost the same. And still, the correct one is the Netflix logo on the right. Think hard and tell me, where could you get a yummy sandwich? The correct logo is the one on the right. If you see the other one, you should probably refrain from entering that subway. Now, which is the correct YouTube logo? No cheating! The left one, of course. Which car do you use to pay at your local supermarket? The one on the right, of course. I'm sure this logo is familiar not only to avid coffee fans. The left one is the real Starbucks logo. Who hasn't seen a room of their dreams in IKEA at least once in their life? But which is the correct IKEA logo? It's the right one. Now tell me, how many hours do you spend watching TikTok videos? If you answered that the real TikTok logo is the one on the right, you probably open the TikTok app at least once a day. One of the best snacks out there, but which Pringles logo is the one you see on the box? The mustache guy doesn't have that much hair. The logo on the left is correct. Level up! Which of these guys do you see when you buy your Pringles? Absolutely! It's the one on the left. Let's see if you tend to take pics of literally everything around you to post them on this social media app. The real Instagram logo is the right one. Heh, <laughs> you must be a real Insta person if you got that right. I'm sure you'll recognize the Pizza Hut logo in no time. Yes, you pizza lover. And of course, it's the one on the left. Okay, we've determined that you're a real fan of pizza, but how about sports? The correct Adidas logo is on the left. And how extreme is your sweet tooth? Will you recognize the real Chupa Chups logo? knew it was the one on the right. Which of these is the real IBM logo? That was a tricky question. I chose the logo on the right, and it was the right choice. How about this seemingly endless source of knowledge and wisdom? What's the real Wikipedia logo? Yep, it's the one on the left. If you watch MTV often enough, it won't take you long to find its real logo. Yep, it's the right one. How about these logos? Tricky, huh?
The real Costa Coffee logo is the one on the right. Now, this question is the trickiest of them all. Which is the correct bright side logo? Huh? I hope you watch our channel often enough to have picked the light bulb on the right. And, you know, always stay on the bright side of life. And level up! Look at the pictures attentively and try to figure out what's wrong with them. Can you find out what's wrong in this picture? Ah, it's not about the numbers. It's the word mistake that's written incorrectly. Can you spot something really strange in this image? It's a barn. Why would it need a chimney? Examine all the details in this picture and figure out what's wrong with it. Oh, I see. The car doesn't have any license plate. Something is off in this picture. But what exactly? This one seems tough. April 31st? Hmm, such a date doesn't exist. How fast can you figure out what's wrong with this picture? The guy must have been dressing in a hurry. He's wearing one regular skate and one roller skate. Which picture is the odd one here? The one with a cat. All other items begin with the letter B, except the kitty. I gotta warn you, be very, very attentive now. Can you find the mistake? Look at this symbol. It's not a zero, it's an O. Oh. If you cracked even 70% of these attention riddles, you're a very, very attentive individual. Now, what was that number again? At first, you'll be a Sherlock trainee. Look carefully at the pictures and pay attention to the smallest details to solve the riddles. Which one of these students has three mothers? It must be this guy right here, the one with the three sandwiches. The guy with three glasses got them from the cafeteria. He must be very thirsty, but it's not a sign of three mothers. But this one definitely brought sandwiches from home, so I bet it's him. Let me know if you disagree. Let's move on. One of the girls has a pet at home. Can you guess which one? It's the girl in the middle. Look, her hands and arms are scratched. She must be living with a cat. Okay, look at these three people. Who is a vampire? It's this guy. See, he doesn't cast a shadow. Something's wrong. Chastity was at a party and met three guys. All of them claimed to be pilots, but one of them lied. Can you guess who's not a pilot? Pilots must have perfect eyesight. This guy is wearing glasses, so he's not a real pilot. Look at these three students. One of them is left-handed. Can you figure out who exactly? It must be this girl. The outer side of her left hand has some ink stains. It happens when she writes. Since we write from left to right, her arm covers everything she's just written. Three best friends met for a coffee in the evening. Can you tell which one of them has a pet? Look at this girl's bag. 
There's dog food in there, so she probably has a dog at home waiting for her. This one is super easy. Three sisters came to visit their parents. One of them got engaged while she was away. Can you tell which one? It's this girl who's wearing a ring. Three men came to a job interview. The company didn't want to hire fathers because they needed full commitment for the first year. All men said they were single and had no families, but one of them lied and actually had a daughter. Which one? It's this guy here. Why would he wear a pink scrunchie on his wrist if he wasn't making his daughter's hair right before the interview? Okay, now let's go and look at people's houses. Here are the bathrooms of Daryl and Tiberius. Which one of them has a girlfriend? It must be Tiberius. Look, there are two toothbrushes in his bathroom. Nevea and Nicoline are students. Both of them live in a one-room apartment with their friends to split the rent. Their mothers once came to visit. Take a look at Nevea and Nicoline's bedrooms. Can you tell which one of them is dating her roommate? It must be Nevea. In Nicoline's bedroom, there are two single beds. And in Nevea's bedroom, there's just one big bed. Look at these three friends. One of them isn't really a human. But which one? Look, this guy right here has only four fingers. Perfect, we trained you well. Now let's solve some cases. The city bank was robbed, and Detective Callum was on the case. After a long investigation, the police managed to track the robber and found the money hidden in the nearest desert in a cactus bush. They couldn't see the robber's face, but there were three suspects. Take a look at the people. Who is guilty? It's this man. Look, he has many scars on his arms and hands. He must have gotten them when he was digging the money in the cactus bush. A group of friends asked Billiam if he wanted to join them on a hike that weekend. He said that he couldn't because he had broken his arm. The next day in school, Billiam, indeed, appeared with a broken arm. So, he stayed at home and his friends went hiking. On Monday, the friends met in school again. Billiam said that he had just stayed home watching TV. His friends told him about the hike and asked why he had lied about the broken arm. Why did they decide that his arm wasn't really broken? Last week, Billiam's right arm was broken. On Monday, it was the left one. He must be faking it. Mr. Tucker called the police and reported that he had been robbed. Detective Callum arrived at his place and found Mr. Tucker tied up to a chair. Mr. Tucker said that he had been sleeping when someone wearing a mask had broken into the room. They took him right out of the bed, tied him up to the chair, and then took all the savings he was keeping in the wardrobe. When they left, he managed to call the police because his cell phone was in his pocket. Still, Detective Callum didn't believe him. Why? Mr. Tucker said that he had been taken right out of bed, but the bed was perfectly made. I doubt that a robber would care enough to make Mr. Tucker's bed on their way out. Detective Callum was spending the winter holidays at a ski resort with his friends. In the morning, they were going to go skiing on the fresh snow that had fallen at night when a local police officer called him and asked him to come to a hotel nearby to solve a case. So, Detective Callum had to go. Someone robbed the cashier's desk and there were three suspects. Questley said that she was in her room all night sleeping. Egbert said that he was out partying in a different hotel and had just come back around an hour ago. Fenton said that he had been binge-watching a show all night but hadn't stolen anything. Who is guilty? It was Egbert. If he had just returned, he would have left his footprints on the fresh snow, but there were no footprints leading to the hotel as Detective Callum was walking there. And the name Egbert will make anyone suspicious. There was a car accident in the suburbs, and police arrived to investigate the case. 
The driver went into a cliff right where the road was taking a dangerous turn. The car turned around, and he was pushed out of it and got stuck nearby. He had his cell phone on him, so he was able to make a call. A police officer helped the driver out and asked him to show what was in the trunk. The driver gladly opened it with his keys. In the trunk, there was his suitcase, some instruments, and a spare tire. The police officer said that the accident had been staged. Why? The driver took the keys out of his pocket. If it had been a real accident, the keys would have remained in the car. Mr. Grayson called the police and said that she had been robbed. Detective Callum arrived for the investigation. Here's what she said. It was almost midnight. I was in my room upstairs painting. Suddenly, the power went out. There was no light or electricity, and I could only see the streetlights outside. Then, the stationary phone rang. I was scared, so I didn't pick it up. I stayed upstairs, and in about 10 minutes, the light came back. I just went to sleep, and now, in the morning, I found out that someone stole my grandma's diamond ring. Detective Callum didn't believe her. Why? If the lights and the electricity were out, how would a stationary telephone ring? This lady is making things up. Gavin drove to get some groceries and parked his car in front of the store. Of course, he forgot where he had parked and couldn't find his car. Luckily, he had taken a picture of his parked car and he opened it to look up the number of the parking lot. The problem is that his parking lot number is covered and the number of the lots nearby doesn't make any sense. Can you figure out what's Gavin's parking lot number and where he should search for his car? The numbers are just turned upside down in the photo. The numbers are 86 through 91, and his car is parked in 87. Now I have a short logo quiz for you. I'll show you a logo, and you have to tell the company. Here's the first one. Do you recognize it? It's Honda, a Japanese car brand. This one is super easy. What is it? This is Pepsi, of course. What about this cute crocodile? Does it ring a bell? This is Lacoste, a French clothing brand. Another easy one. I bet you have it on your phone. Yes, of course. That's Spotify. What about this one? Yes, it's Nike. This one is a very fancy brand. What's your guess? That's Louis Vuitton. Okay, another one for you. It's harder, but you've got this. What's your call? This is Reebok, an American footwear company. Do you recognize this bull? Is a Lamborghini logo. This is a painfully familiar yellow rectangle. Where is it from? That's the National Geographic logo. Porsche and Vinette live in a country where postal services are super unreliable. Everything sent by post is stolen from the package. How can Portia send his wife, Vinette, a diamond ring if both of them can buy locks, but don't have keys from each other's locks? Portia can lock the box with the ring and send it to Vinette. When she receives the box, she should lock the box with her lock and send it back to him. When he receives it, he can open his lock and remove it and send the box back to Vinette with her lock only, so that she can open it once she gets it again. There is a box filled with balls of different colors. Five red ones, eight blue ones, and eleven purple ones. Ninja has to pick out balls blindfolded 
until he's sure that he has at least two balls of the same color. What's the minimum number of balls Ninja should take out to be sure of that? Worst case scenario, he'll be picking out the balls of a different color every time. There are three colors, so if he picks out three, they might all be different. But if he picks out four, then the additional one for sure will match one of the existing colors. So, Ninja should pick four. Wow! While working late at night in a top-secret laboratory, Michael finally managed to create the DNA of a hybrid monstrous creature. After all that hard work, he decided to grab a quick coffee and donut as a little reward. But he came back and saw that the specimen had disappeared from the incubator. Hmm. Michael lined up Ryan, Jeff, and Laura and confronted them. Who took an important top-secret piece of research I was working on? Ryan said he'd been busy doing some additional research on a separate project and had no idea what was going on. Jeff said he hadn't touched the hybrid creature and had been in the archives digging through some files he needed. And Laura said she'd been in the bathroom the whole time. So who took the specimen? Michael never mentioned that he was dealing with a hybrid monstrous creature. Jeff just let himself get caught. Better think smart next time. Anne absolutely loathes winter, but just like anyone else, she has to go out and do stuff. She had just moved to a snowy city for work and experiences some of the coldest winters. But she managed to make it to the mall to do some quick shopping through a huge blizzard. When she came back to her parked car, she discovered that someone broke into it and took her belongings. When the police lined up the three suspects, they each gave their stories. Francesca said she had been polishing her car outside and didn't know anything. Ned said he had been shopping for clothes, and Earl said he had been sitting in a cafe on the upper floor of the mall. The police arrested the suspect. Who was it? Francesca. She was polishing her car outside in the middle of a blizzard? That's not only illogical, but not safe either. She just gave herself away. You wake up and find yourself trapped in a room with four doors in front of you. You don't have enough time to choose which door leads to freedom. You hear a monster coming, so you check out the doors quickly. The leftmost door has a sign on it saying, take the door on the right to break free. The second door also has a sign saying, it's the right door. The third door has a sign, freedom is just right in front of you. And the last door has a sign, don't trust the signs. Which door should you choose? The last door. It says not to trust the signs, but it doesn't mean that they're lying. The first door says to take the door on the right. Not necessarily the last door on the right, but just the one on the right. The second one says it's the right door. Not the correct door, but the right door, as in the door on the right. The third door says freedom is just right in front of you. That just doesn't make any sense, does it? So it's the last door on the right that leads to freedom. Mason was extremely happy when he got the news that his sister Jane was coming to town. He had just started a new job and couldn't wait to host her for the first time. She was only able to see some nice pictures of the places he visited, including where he lived. When he picked her up from the airport, he noticed something slightly off about her. She was robotic with her responses and seemed stiff with her movements. She wouldn't eat and only insisted that she wanted to rest up. Strange. Had he been watching too much sci-fi? After a while, Mason hears a knock on the door, and to his surprise, it's Jane. But I thought… Jane tells him that the Jane in his apartment is an imposter. When the Jane in the bedroom goes out and sees the other Jane sitting on the couch, they're both in shock. They both try to convince Mason that they're the real Jane. But who will Mason believe?
It's pretty normal to come back from a trip pretty tired and wanting to rest. But how did the second Jane know where Mason lived without prior knowledge? And she didn't even break a sweat running up to the apartment. On a nice day, Vivian, who lived in a town on the seashore, decided to go for a hike alone. But after hours of trekking, she ended up on a section of the forest she wasn't familiar with. Before her were three paths. One path had bare footprints leading away. Another had human shoe prints. And the third was right by the river. Which one should Vivian take to find her way? The river path. Since she lives in a coastal town, the river mouth most likely ends up in the sea. That way, she could figure out where she is. Melissa is sharing a train car with three other people. It's a very hot day, and the air conditioner doesn't even work. James starts complaining and only calms down after opening the window. Melissa lays down her red silk scarf her grandmother gave her next to her. Judith compliments it. Robert, a senior, mentions that he forgot to bring a gift for his wife who will pick him up from the train station. James has a crush on Judith. After a while, Melissa goes to the bathroom and comes back to find the scarf missing. Who was the one who took it? None of them. It was a hot day and James opened the window. The wind sent the scarf flying right out of it. Some zombies have Diego trapped in a room. They're surrounding him. He's stuck and can't escape. Their arms are breaking in and reaching for him. When Diego looks around, he realizes that he's in a small newspaper stand with magazines and pocketbooks. And looking around him more attentively, he finds a roll of tape nearby. How can he avoid those nasty bites? The only way for Diego to escape will be to tape those magazines around crucial parts of his body where they can't lay his teeth on him. It'll be light enough for him to run away from the zombies without getting hurt. Plus, he'll have plenty of reading material for the road. Evan got lost in a forest, and just his luck, it was snowing. The only thing the police searching for him found were four parallel lines leading into the forest. Something doesn't seem right, they thought, and took several people into questioning. Nick said he had been at the store buying some groceries. Vanessa said she had been babysitting. Christina had been at work the whole time. After hearing the stories, they arrested Nick. Why? Nick was in a wheelchair. The four parallel lines were left by Nick rolling into the forest and back out. It's the beginning of a new school year, and Dave started a new job as a computer studies teacher at a local high school. Another fellow teacher, Roy, didn't really welcome him because he wanted that position. But at the end of the day, there was a security breach which leaked out a lot of important information about the school. When the police questioned everyone, including Roy and Dave, they each gave their stories. Dave said, I was checking exam papers and was at the staff room the whole time. Roy said, I was preparing homework for my classes when everything happened. Who should the police arrest? Who was lying? Dave. There wouldn't be any exams on the first day of school. Gareth is in a pickle. He's at the police station looking at the lined-up suspects, one of whom stole Beth's bag while she was having a picnic in the park. He observes them. Beth describes the culprit as someone big, no hair, and wearing a black jacket. All the men lined up match the description. Gareth looks at each of them, and they all have one distinct trait that makes them stand out from each other. Suspect number one has a beard. 
Number two is wearing shorts. And number three is wearing glasses. Gareth knows immediately who to arrest. Who is it? Suspect number one has dirt all over his boots. The rest are all clean. He ran through the mud tracks while Beth was having a picnic.